Hey, what's up, guys? It's Crate Junkies. Um, this is episode 25. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess first and foremost, I'm going to drop the needle on this. This is a declaration of fuzz. Basically, uh, fuzz garage rock import compilation from, uh, I guess it's a German, possibly, pressing. Kind of a hard record to find. Oh! That's not how it sounds. I was listening to 7 Inches last night, and I forgot to switch my uh, my shit back, so we're going to have to do that really quick, which is a pain in my ass, but uh, I got to do it. So I guess you're going to have to, like, hold on while I switch everything. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, oh, yes. These Rigas. I love them, but I hate them. Um... There we go. I don't mind doing this, though. I need to get some, uh... I gotta get a new mat. I don't like these, uh... These mats that come with this. These, uh... Felt mats. I don't like felt mats. Um, I'd much rather have, a Just a vinyl mat or something. Not vinyl, um... I don't know. I don't like the felt ones. Just put it like that. Okay. So... Starting over, we are listening to Declaration of Fuzz. This is an older, probably 80s comp of uh, garage bands, um, Boys From Nowhere, the Not Quite Black Light Chameleons, Sick Rose, The Scene, The Blackberry Jug, Mystic Eyes, Miracle Workers, Cornflake Zoo, The Stepford Husbands, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the Other Side, Crimson Shadows, Running Stream, Green Telescope, Preachers, just a lot of good old school punk garage stuff. Um, that's an import, pretty cool fucking compilation. I'm really getting into garage comps, so that's what we're listening to in the background. Um, did a lot of, I you know, I'm, I'm late big time on a video here. I first and foremost want to thank everybody who has taken advantage of the Cray Junkies trading post or vinyl trading post that I started. Um, just a quick, you know, little thing about that. You know, I started it because I thought it was a good idea of a place where we could trade and, and, and talk about VCLT, trade records, sell records, um, and, you know, just music stuff in, in general. And, uh, you know, you could do it on the Vinyl Community Facebook, but what I was thinking is if you would start doing it on the Vinyl Community Facebook, sooner or later that's all you would see. People trying to sell, 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 buy, you know, and that's all you would hear and talk about. And I think the Vinyl Community Facebook has its own its feeling, you know. It's, an, it's its own entity, and to go in and change that and add that to it would just kind of be disrespectful to the almost bar atmosphere that it, that it has, you know, where you can bullshit with people and this, that, and the other. So to, to have a separate one for the vinyl community and, and others um, to come in and trade and talk about buying and selling and trading was, I thought, a pretty good idea, and a lot of people seem to like it. Um, you know, don't get discouraged if you put something up and it doesn't sell or, or get, you know, want to get traded right away. Once it's on that page, people can look through it, you know, from five months from now, your post is still going to be there. So once you get it up on there, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Just get it up on there. Um... My phone's ringing, fuck that, I got a video to do, I've been trying to get this video done for the last week and a half, so we're not taking any phone calls today. Um, next order of business, I want to thank Dr. Deadwax and a couple others who have taken my suggestion about shotting out a Vinyl Community Facebook member at the beginning of every video. This is what I'm going to be doing, at least most of the videos. I'm going to say about 90% of my videos I'm going to try to do it, obviously there's going to be one or two that I might have, might forget or... It's just a video that just doesn't, you know, um, warrant me doing something like that. So anyway, the YouTube Vinyl Community member I want to shout out today is a user named Ryan and Stuff. He's actually from uh, uh, right around me. Um, I have not met him in person yet. He's a younger kid, I'd say, in his late teens. Um, he lives uh, 
about 30, 45 minutes away from me. He shops at a couple shops that I've been to and that I frequent. Um, we have not got to meet up yet. He's into uh, metal, rock, um, new metal, rock, punk, stuff like that. He buys a lot of new records. He has about six videos up, but he's an interesting kid. Um, he's actually got a really good taste in music and, and some knowledge in his, in his mind there. So check him out. I'm going to leave the link down here. If you never heard of him, go check out his channel. Go subscribe to him. And this is what you guys need to do. Instead of instead of picking up your uh, you know your your thing and cheers you know cheers and people. Um, and I'm not saying not to do that, okay. But um, you can do that. But at the same time, let's mention some vinyl community members that may may not get a lot of publicity. Because the, the the sad thing I see a lot happen is vinyl community members coming here, making a couple videos, and not really getting any views and stopping because they're not getting any attention. And really, the reason why, and you know, the reason why you do this and the reason why I do this isn't just because of the love of music. It's to you know start dialogue with people, talk to people, get to know people who are interested in the same things you are. So let's show everybody the same amount of love that you were shown when you came into the vinyl community. And I'm talking about guys like Laz, LJ. Um, you know, the bigger guys on YouTube, these guys who are getting a lot of views, you guys need to pick up and, and um, you know, and do, do this type of thing because it'll help these younger guys get views and get people to know who they are. It'll also, you know, expand the vinyl community where we all can kind of know each other. And um, there's so many guys out there that I see videos from that I've never heard of. And if we were all doing this at the beginning of every video, you know, it would just be a good thing. So let's try to do that, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Another little order of business before I get to the vinyl is uh, I just hit 200 subscribers. Um, I'm at like 203, and I didn't even, I honestly haven't checked my page in such a long time. I checked, and I, I was kind of thinking it's about time I'm about at 200. So I checked, and, I, and sure enough, I was. So um, I'm going to be doing a contest. I tried a contest at 100. Um, the contest I wanted to do just just people weren't digging it. I wanted to do a video, people sending in pictures, doing something creative with records, and make kind of like a compilation video, and I got a couple entries, and it just wasn't enough. So I called the contest short, and I said that I'm going to come back with a contest for the 200 subscribers, and I'm going to wait until some of the bigger guys, like um, Derek and Mr. Hall of Fame and them, uh, see when their contests are over, I'm going to try to put mine in there, because right now it's just swamped with contests, and, and uh threads and stuff so I'm gonna wait until it's a, it's a down point and I'll release my contest then I do I will say that there's gonna be some brand new records up for grabs for that contest so that should be interesting okay let's get to the vinyl because that's what we're fucking here for first thing I posted these on a Facebook day and night I was pretty happy to find these I got three um, reissues of Misfits seven inches I'm gonna start off with my favorite one and that is their first seven inch ever um, this is this is worth you know two grand if you have the original. This is um, the Misfits, Cough and Cool. Um, this is you know it's got my favorite song by the Misfits, Misfits on it, She, which is only a two minute song, um, but it's the best song I think they've ever made. Um, and it's also got uh, what other songs on here, Cough and Cool, um, which is also a great track. And these are reissues. Um, this is on the all red with a small pinhole, scratched out, um, whatever. But these were fairly cheap. And, you know, I'm not paying two grand for the original. So just to have it's nice. And I'm a big Misfits fan. So, and it's in mint condition. And I got them for cheap. Next one is um, the Evil is Evil, Evil is as Evil does. This one has, um, I think this one has about six tracks on it. I think this one's live, too. I'm not actually sure. I forget if this one's live or not. I listened to them all last night. I think this one is live. Um, but that one I got, and I also got another one of my favorite um, songs by the Misfits, um, Halloween, which is a great track, and it's on this Halloween uh, EP, I guess you could call it. Um, there you go. So... And this is on just orange, and it comes with like a little, just a little fold-out type insert thing, and uh, it's, it's a good re reissue. Clock. It's it's like a true to. I like reissues that are really true to what the original looked like, um, and these are all very very similar. I mean, if not exact replicas of what the originals were. So I'm really happy with these, and I got them at a good price, and I'm um, just really happy to have them. Um, next one, this one I picked up last night. I did not get to listen to the whole thing yet. This is the Flaming Lips, and 
em embryonic. And um, I this comes with a CD, um, which has the entire album on it. And I popped it open in the car last night because I had a long ride home just to kind of preview it and listen to some of the songs on it. And I must say, every song that I heard, really enjoyed. Um, I'm a big fan of Yosemite Battles the Pink Robot. And I'm a big fan of their earlier stuff that was more grungy, I guess I would say. I mean, as best as close as grunge as, as Flaming Lips comes. Um, but yeah, this is a really cool gatefold. I love that front front photo of this chick. Just It's kind of sexual, I think, anyway. At least that's where my mind goes. Nice little picture of them on the inside. The both records, double. it's a double LP. But anyway, like I said, I was listening to the CD and it, I really liked it. So I'm, I'm, I know I'm going to enjoy the record. Actually, I'm, I'm really actually surprised that I really loved it. One of them's on a yellow, a yellow vinyl. This is a good record. Um, it really is. If you like Yosemite Battles of Pink Robots, you're going to like this, I think. Um, and then it, um, they also have lyric sheets, which are record holders um, or sleeves. But obviously you're not going to use these. You're going to use this because it makes sense. The other one is on... And I'm a, I'm a, I like Flaming Lips. You know, I um, I bought this album, You Should Me Battles of Pink Robots, from this girl who I think is just such an amazing woman. Anyway, um, here's a... The other one's a blue... And uh, she worked. She used to work at this record store. I used to go to, and um, I just like huge crush on this girl. I think she's like just I don't know something. You know how when you meet somebody, you just you just know. I don't know. You just have that feeling anyway. But let's get over that. Um, so I she sold me this record, and I had it sitting on my you know Sydney Battles of Pink Robots. Had it sitting on my shelf for such a long time, and she posted a song um, off of that record, and I said, you know what? She sold me that fucking record. She's posting a song of that record. Let me listen to that fucking record. I like this girl. You know, maybe there's something to it. You know, I'm, I'm like this weird, hopeless, romantic type. So anyway, um, so I listened to this record, and I'm just like, wow. You know, I really like this. I mean, I really, really dug that. And and this record right here is just kind of like, it almost feels in a way like it. Um, not, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I haven't listened to enough of it, but I do know that it, it follows the same feeling um, musically, and I really, really enjoy it, so I cannot wait to listen to this in its entirety tonight. Uh, uh, uh. Um, speaking of that girl, though, um, she's looking for a copy of Deja, I forget the name, Deja something by Brand New. Um, I have the CD, I can run and get it for us so we can see it, and if anybody has, and I'll, I'm going to run quick and get it, I'll be right back. It's, it's a really hard-to-find record, but she's looking for this record, and I am looking for it, too. Um, it's called Deja Intendu, which I always had a problem with pronouncing, but anyway. I remember even when she told me the name of this band and the album, I was like, what? What? What did you say? But um, anyway, she has like, this really awesome tattoo like right here of this, which is really hot. And um, anyway, so she put me on to this, and... Um, She's looking for the vinyl, and I am too. Now, the vinyl goes for a lot of money, man. Like, it's like 300 bucks. I've seen it for 400 Even the reissue goes for like 150 So, I don't know. If any of you guys have a copy of this and you're willing to sell it and maybe, like, do a little trade and a little cash or, or work out something, dude, I am really looking for this vinyl. Um, I want to get it for her, but I also want a copy too. So, I don't know. Just hit me up if anything so anyway um next one this is some garage punk um from the 80s i'd say around 88 this is um route 60 666 or 666 by um the reverb motherfuckers um this is um a limited edition um only 666 pressed um it's got um a s fucking um <laughs> my mind's in other places right now. Um, a special cover that people do with um, screen printing. It's screen printed. Aha. Uh -huh. 
Yeah, screen print. And uh, the labels are really cool. Really dope labels. Um, and it's just some good 80s garage punk. Um, I listened to a little bit of The Shop. Really killer stuff. Um, picked it up for fairly cheap. Um, thought it was pretty cool, so I grabbed that, and I'm happy with that. Next one... Um, this is a really, really, really um, hard to find, hard to come by psych pop record from the late 60s. Um, this is Mill the Millennium Begin. Um, this is on the Red Columbia 360 label. And um, it's not in the best of shape. I got this for really cheap. But just to have the record is pretty cool because it's one of those records that you're not going to see. And when you do see it in really good condition, you're going to pay a lot of money for it. So if you're into psych pop, um, check this out. I personally... I'm a little on the edge about it. It's okay. I listen. Obviously, I listen to it. Um, it's okay, but um, it's not. I like garage psych more than I like psych pop. If that, you know, I like something with a some balls and some stomp in it. Um, but this isn't too bad. I'm just saying it, it's a rare record though, and it's pretty cool to add to the collection. But musically, it, it's okay. I might have to give it a couple more spins. But yeah, I, I grabbed that. Some of you psych fans will know automatically what that is. So, next one, this was fucking cool. Uh, produced by Frank Zappa, his motherfucking self. These are the GTOs. Um, the girls together outrageously. Permanent damage. What these girls were, were groupies. Um, they actually coined the word groupies. That's how awesome these chicks are. Um, basically, what this album is, is... You know, them, it, it's like a cross between, like, the Manson Family Girls, if you've ever heard them sing, and, like, what the Pink Ladies from Greece, if you take the Manson Family Girls and the Pink Ladies from Greece and you put them together, um, and maybe even add, like, uh, some psychedelic hippie chicks into the mix, you'll get, this will come out, this, this is what would come out, um, high school type, but, um, really cool gatefold. It's a hard record to find. This is one you're not going to be able to just go out and find. I love this girl on the far right. This girl, she is so cute. I don't know. I find her so attractive. And that girl, too, with the star in her belly. The rest of them are iffy, but um, each one of them has this little story they tell, and it's re they're really interesting. Um, the music is really interesting. Um, it's very psychedelic and very um, 60s. Um... Just a really good record, and the fact, and you can tell right away that it's produced by Frank Zappa just by just the music, the music on it. There's also, from my no best of my knowledge, there's a couple famous artists on here playing guitar and other things like that that aren't mentioned on the sleeve. I actually heard like possibly, and I know this is weird, but like Rod Stewart um, makes some type of appearance on here, and possibly some other guys. Um, the label is really cool, too. It's on this um, Straight Records label. It's in really good shape. The vinyl's in great shape. The The sleeve's a little... Um, but, I mean, if you see the sleeve, you'd know why. Because it's one of those sleeves that no matter what you do, it's going to get a little crushed up. Um, but it's not in bad shape. And I got it for fairly cheap. And it is a record that is really hard to find. So when you see records like that, don't hesitate to, to get them. Um, even, you know, because a lot of people want to get stuff in mint condition, but let's face the facts. A lot of these records, especially like the ones I just showed, those two, the Millennium one, Begin, and then the GTOs one, let's face it, those records don't show up in mint condition a lot. So you might as well grab what you can grab while you can. Um, and later on, if you happen to find something better, then you replace it. But you always grab the shit, especially with stuff like that. Um, so really cool record. Um, like I said, it's like a cross between the Manson Family Girls, uh, the Pink Ladies from Greece if they s did music, and um, some hippie chicks that listen to a lot of Grateful Dead, I guess, could be, you know, if you put them all together, um, you probably come out with the GTO. So it's a really cool record. I think you definitely appreciate it and like it. Um, next one. This one's like an iffy, so-so blues rock record. One really good thing about this is Harvey Mandel, which is like a great, great blues rock um, guitar player, plays on this. This is Barry Goldberg's Blast from the Past. This is on Buddha Records. It's in mint condition. Um, not a bad listen. I listened to it once, so I'm not going to go and talk too deeply into it. It was a good listen. Um, supposedly, I thought Dwayne Allman was supposed to be on here, but after doing a little research, I found out that no, he's not on here, even though it says here that he is. 
So I don't know. But if you see it, pick it up. If you like blues, rock, I think you'd enjoy it. It's definitely a good listen. Pick that one up. Um, next one. This one I, I previewed in the shop. This is Kaleidoscope, Bernice. Um, this is one of those psych, folky uh, kind of rock records that is um, has been reissued. Um, it's kind of a classic, if, if you will. Um, it's... From the preview at the shop, I really, really enjoyed it and liked it. I have not listened to it since, but it's definitely a really cool psyche folk record. I'd say more on the folk side than the psych side, but um, it's got a little psychedelic touch to it. This girl, for some reason, turns me on. I don't know what it is about girls who look slutty, but for some reason, I want to do nasty things to her, and I don't even know why. <laughs> Um, I have the weirdest turn-ons, like, the weirdest things turn me on, um, but yeah, um, let's get away from, you know, my mind just can't get off of sex today, but anyway, well, any day, actually, um, next one, Sugar and Spice by the Crying Shames, this is, was a disappointment, I know a lot of people are like, what, what, that's a great record, eh, I, I really just, I don't know, right now at this very moment, I'm listening to too much, like, garage punk, or like Garage Psych that I can't really get into the more poppy um, stuff right now, and especially if it's not catchy. I need like really catchy hooks to get into that kind of stuff. And I just didn't, after one playthrough of this, I just didn't really catch, nothing really caught my ear. Um, but I'm going to give it another spin because I know a lot of people like this record, and I'm, I like the Crying Shames. I have another record by them that I enjoy. I just was not really digging this one. This is in mint condition, great condition. Got it for cheap. Um, it's an original press. I just really wasn't wasn't digging it as much as I thought I would. Next one, um, taking a little trip to the rap side of things with Lethal Injection by Ice Cube. This is one of my favorite Ice Cube records. When I was a kid, I had this on cassette. Listened to it nonstop. Um, finally seen it on vinyl. I have a lot of Ice Cube on vinyl, a lot of his older stuff. This just happened to be one I didn't have. So I'm really super excited and stoked to get this, and I got it for really cheap. I got it for under five bucks, so I was happy about that. It's in really good shape. Um, next one, something I already have, but I wanted a beat around copy, and that's exactly what this is. My other copy is a Japanese press. It does not have the OB strip, but it has everything else intact, and the insert booklet, and, um, it's worth a little bit of money even without the OB strip. So I try not to play that one, and I've been looking for just, like, the kind of beat around original press, and this, this is it. Um, it's in great shape, it wasn't expensive, and now I can, you know, take this album out and listen to it. If you never heard the Rolling Stones' Flowers, um, uh, you don't know what you're missing. This is a damn good record. Huge Stones fan, especially their earlier stuff. Um, the Stones, for me, start to fall so fall apart around, I guess, the late 70s, possibly. Um, next one, this was a disappointment. Um, I would give it to somebody, but I just don't know who's really going to want it after I tell you about it. Um, first thing, it's a sitar beat by Big Jim Sullivan. Um, I was, A, disappointed with the music. I didn't really like it. Now, some people might love it. I didn't really like it. Next thing that I was super disappointed about is that the vinyl, and I'll try to get it on the light. Yeah, right there. You see it? Somebody busted a big fucking load all over this thing. Not on that side, but on this side, too. It just looks like somebody liked this music so much that they blew their fucking load all over it and then smeared it the fuck in. For me to deal with, but to you, here's the problem. I've cleaned this thing about three or four times. It's not coming off. It doesn't affect play, and it doesn't leave any residue on your needle. So I'm guessing that it might have been something that was done in the factory. It does not affect play at all. In fact, this album plays wonderful, but you know the splooge is just every fucking where. So I don't know what to do about it. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I'm going to just give it to somebody in a trade package or if somebody's interested in it, wants to actually give me something for it. It's in really good shape. I mean, it still has a shrink on it. It's almost near mint. I mean, it really is. There's no deep scratches. There's no scratches. It's just that splooge. I mean, if you, if you want a record with, with jizz all over it, I mean, this is this is, this is is what you're looking for. This is right up... This might be right up your alley. I don't know. I mean... Yeah, so it's, I mean, it's, and the music, I'm just really not into it. It's mostly instrumental. I like sitar, but it's just not that great. I, I don't know. I, I just, I don't know. This one is amazing, okay? So this is definitely a redemption. Um, this was big time redemption because this is like classic, amazing, hardcore, not hardcore, but just an amazing psych record, garage psych, or not even garage psych, just psych, well, yeah, garage psych. 
Head Shop. Um, self-titled Head Shop. What a trippy-ass cool cover that is. This album is so good. On the yellow Epic label, um, if you can find this, which you probably won't be able to because the originals are like impossible to find, they go for some money, and the reissues, I've never seen one. I know they're out there, but I've never seen one. I don't know who did the reissue, but this is a fucking killer record. If you can find this or you can go on online and get it, um, number BN26476, check that up on Discogs. Um, there's the back, really psychedelic. Loving the track, Sunny. They do a um, rendition of Revolution by the Beatles on, on side two, track one. And it's a good one. And just the rest of the record is just fucking killer. I mean, if you're into psych... I seen Tony show this a while back. I remember him showing it and me saying to myself, fuck, I have that record at the shop in my hold, hold bin because I thought it looked like a cool record. And then after seeing Tony show it and talk about it, I was like, I have to go get this. And I did. Um, just an amazing fucking psych record. You guys have got to pick this up. I'm fucking telling you, man. That's the best thing I, I got all week. I mean, really, it really is. Next one. Now, I got a lot of, and I'm going to show you really quick. Those two stacks right there are records that I got from a big haul. From um, They're sealed classical. They're sealed. I mean, I'll show you this one really quick. This is uh, the sitar player, Revi Shankar, or Shankar. Shankar. This is a sealed copy of one of his albums. Check how cool and psychedelic that is. That's sealed, strictly imported, um, you know, on Angel Records. Um, this is this is killer shit here. This is um, the first composer and soloist, his first sitar concerto. Um, this is a killer fucking record. Um, it's sealed. I've listened to some of it online. It's killer. I mean, it really is. I mean, I like that type of shit. I like obscure stuff from India and things like that. This one just happened to be a really good find for a buck. This is called Duyo to Safari or some shit. Spices. It's an uh, import, and um, it's actually signed by the artist back here. I seen one of these on eBay that was, like, completely trashed, okay? I mean, imagine this record, but after somebody took a piss on it, stomped on it, threw it off of a train, you know, threw it into a pile of garbage, um, took another shit on it, wiped their ass with it. Imagine that, okay? Imagine looking at this record after all that was done to it. Well, that's what the one online looked like, okay? And I'm serious. And they wanted thirty dollars for it because there's supposedly funk breaks on here that are pretty popular funk breaks that might have been taken from this record at some point in time. Therefore, it's worth a little bit of money to like DJs and whatnot. Um, I found it um, for a buck, and it's in mint condition. It's 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 really cool to add to the collection. I'm happy to have it. Really, really nice shape on it. It's, it's fucking mint. So I was happy about that. And there's tons more of that type of stuff right here in these piles. I'm not going to do that in this Crate Junkies episode. I'm going to do a separate episode, maybe even two or three, because there's so much in there. If you're into classical and stuff, man, I got a lot of sealed classical stuff that's really good. A lot of Angel record stuff that you might be interested in. So stay tuned, and I'll let you know. I'm probably going to be trying to unload a lot of that. Although there is some other stuff in there that's really good. Um, soul funk stuff. There's some reggae. There's, I mean, just a ton of stuff that I got for really cheap. And, you know, I'm, I didn't pass anything up. I grabbed everything that looked cool and took it home with me. So anyway, let's move on because we're already at 30 minutes. Um, next, next record, a very big disappointment. This is the Flaming Lips, um, Once Beyond Hopelessness. Basically, this is just instrumental music for a movie that was done called... Um, Christmas on Mars film score. So that's what it is. It's on orange vinyl. There's a 7-inch that comes with it that I did not listen to yet. Um, but it's just, you know, I was expecting something more along the lines of Yoshimini Battles the Pink Robots, and it just was not that. There's no lyrics. It's just really not in, in moving at all. I never seen the movie, but the movie comes with this, which is cool. So I'm going to watch the movie and then possibly listen to it one more time. If I don't like it after that, I'm probably going to give it up for trade or, you know, sell it or something. So, you know, that was just kind of like a blind buy. And then last but not least, anyway, in the 12 inches, um, Bury My Body Volume t volume 1. I might have showed this in my last video. I think I did. But just in case I didn't, um, th I finally have the... This is volume one and two of um, Bury Your Body, um, Garage Rarities. 
This one's actually a numbered copy. This one's a repress of the first issue. So this one's a, like an original. This one's not. But whatever. It's one and two. I'm happy to have one and two. Really getting into uh, psych, psych compilations, garage compilations. I'm actually going to be picking up a couple of them tonight. So that's about it for the LPs and stuff. I, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Remember to shout out somebody in every video you do. It really will help build this community and let people know about people they might not know about. Also, if you can find this album, okay, Deja Intend, and I always fuck the fucking name up, but in Intendu um, by Brand New. Um, I know it's a double LP. It's It goes for some money, but I'm willing to do what I gotta do to get it. So, let me know if anybody has a copy or knows where a copy is. And also, don't forget to go put your pictures in for the Punk Texas's Record Shell video. Um, I'm going to put a link for that stuff down there, too. And I'm going to put a link for Ryan and Stuff's channel down here. And um, I believe that's it. If there's anything else I missed, it'll be in the links below. Um, take it easy, guys. Until next time, I am Crate Junkies. I will see you on the flip. Um, my phone's ringing, fuck that, I got a video to do, I've been trying to get this video done for the last week and a half, so we're not taking any phone calls today. Um, next order of business, I want to thank Dr. Deadwax and a couple others who have taken my suggestion about shotting out a Vinyl Community Facebook member at the beginning of every video. This is what I'm going to be doing, at least most of the videos. I'm going to say about 90% of my videos I'm going to try to do it. Obviously, there's going to be one or two that I might have, might forget, or it's just a video that just doesn't, you know, um, warrant me doing something like that. So anyway, the YouTube Vinyl Community member I want to shout out today is a user named Ryan and Stuff. He's actually from uh, uh, right around me. Um, I have not met him in person yet. He's a younger kid, I'd say, in his late teens. Um, he lives... Uh, about 30, 45 minutes away from me. He shops at a couple shops that I've been to and that I've... Oh, yes, oh, yes. These Rigas. I love them, but I hate them. Um... There we go. I don't mind doing this, though. I need to get some... Uh... I gotta get a new mat. I don't like these uh these mats that come with this these uh felt mats. I don't like felt mats. Um, I'd much rather have a just a vinyl mat or something. Not vinyl. Um, I don't know. I don't like the felt ones. Just put it like that. Okay. So starting over. We are listening to Declaration of Fuzz. This is an older, probably '80s comp of uh. Garage bands, um, boys from nowhere, the not quite. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Crate Junkies. Um, this is episode 25. Oh, yeah. Um, I guess first and foremost, I'm going to drop the needle on this. This is a declaration of fuzz. Basically, a fuzz garage rock import compilation from, a, I guess it's a German, possibly, pressing. Kind of a hard record to find. Oh, that's not how it sounds. I was listening to 7 Inches last night, and I forgot to switch my, uh, my shit back, so... We're going to have to do that really quick, which is a pain in my ass, but uh, I got to do it. So I guess you're going to have to, like, hold on while I switch everything. Oh, yes. And, you know, just music stuff in, in general. 
And, uh, you know, you could do it on the Vinyl Community Facebook, but what I was thinking is if you would start doing it on the Vinyl Community Facebook, sooner or later that's all you would see. People trying to sell, 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 buy, you know, and that's all you would hear and talk about. And I think the Vinyl Community Facebook has its own its feeling, you know. It's, an, it's its own entity, and to go in and change that and add that to it would just kind of be disrespectful to the almost bar atmosphere that it, that it has, you know, where you can bullshit with people and this, that, and the other. So to, to have a separate one for the vinyl community and, and others um, to come in and trade and talk about buying and selling and trading was, I thought, a pretty good idea, and a lot of people seem to like it. Um, you know, don't get discouraged if you put something up and it doesn't sell or, or get, you know, want to get traded right away. Once it's on that page, people can look through it, you know, from five months from now, your post is still going to be there. So once you get it up on there, you ain't got nothing to worry about. Just get it up on there. Black, light. Chameleons, Sick Rose, The Scene, The Blackberry Jug, Mystic Eyes, Miracle Workers, Cornflake Zoo, The Stepford Husbands, <laughs> the, uh, uh, the Other Side, Crimson Shadows, Running Stream, Green Telescope, Preachers, just a lot of good old school punk garage stuff. Um, that's an import. Pretty cool fucking compilation. I'm really getting into garage comps, so... That's what we're listening to in the background. Um, did a lot of, I, you know, I'm, I'm late, big time, on a video here. I first and foremost want to thank everybody who has taken advantage of the Cray Junkies trading post, or vinyl trading post, that I started. Um, just a quick, you know, little thing about that. You know, I started it because I thought it was a good idea of a place where we could trade and, and, and talk about VCLT, trade records, sell records, um... 